Hey, good afternoon everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Typical afternoon here. All the solar systems are full. Haven't actually seen the sun, but enough power came in today already. We're in good shape. And you're getting ready to build your first system. So continuing on in our beginner series, we've decided you're going to start with about a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. You're going to need an inverter, you're going to need solar panel extension cables, a cutoff switch for your panels, a charge controller, a little bit of wire, a fuse, and some solar panels. And that's going to get you up and running for all the things that we've been showing in this series. And if the battery is the heart of your system, the charge controller is the brains. And that's what we're going to cover today, is making sure you put some good brains on the system. And while these 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries are kind of hovering around the $500 mark, depending what brand you would get, and there's different ways of getting there, here's one complete 200 amp hour battery. And maybe you found two 100 amp hour batteries that came in well under $500, which they do now. And those are tied in parallel to make a 200 amp hour bank. So depending on how you're getting the heart of your system tied up, whether it's with a couple of cheaper 100 amp hours tied together or one larger battery, which are a little bit more expensive, we're going to go into the brains. But we'll consider this the heart. And while I don't advocate one way or the other on the heart of your system because there's just so many good batteries out there available and the same goes with the inverters, I don't have a real strong opinion. There's plenty of inverters to choose from out there that work as well. I really do have an opinion on the brains and I'm going to actually advocate for you beginners that you would go with the Victron. I'm not affiliated with Victron, but I have run so many different types of charge controllers over the years. And for beginning people, I find that this is the most user-friendly and it's a plug and play. And I'm going to go over why I really like Victron as opposed to some of the other charge controllers I've worked with in the past and why this is so good for beginners. And we're going to talk about this 7515 MPPT Smart Solar Charge Controller today from Victron. Comes in right now at 67 bucks. That's pretty cheap. And like in the previous videos, we we're, we're going to try and get a few hundred watts, at least 200, 300 watts of solar coming into your little backup system to run your refrigerator, your freezer. You might do a little cooking on it as well. Uh, this is going to work for that. And if you needed a little more solar, you might want to go with a bigger charge controller, uh, such as I've got right here. That's the 130. And looking at the online, that's $123 today. So again, very reasonable price. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Victron's too expensive. I don't consider that too expensive for being the brains of your system and making it to once you have this plugged in, uh, you're not going to have to think about your system too much more. And you're just going to be able to like look at the Bluetooth app and see exactly what's going on with your system. Takes all the guesswork out. As I can see on that particular system right there is what we're looking at. I've got 20 watts coming mm -hmm. in. We're in absorption, holding it at 14.2 volts, which is perfect for lithium iron phosphate. And it's just, it's just so easy. So uh, everything's already pre-programmed into the app for the type of chemistry we're going to be working, being lithium iron phosphate. And just at a glance, you'll always know what's going on with your system. It has a pre-programmed smart lithium for lithium iron phosphate gives you the exact right charging parameters float voltage absorption to where once you just go through which is so easy um, you'll be up and running and you won't be, ha be having to like look too often at what's going on but when you want to you can just open up your device your phone your tablet or your laptop and you'll know exactly what's going on with your little system right here i'm in absorption 
like I just showed you guys, this this particular system up here up in the shop has gotten all the power it can put in to the heart of the system today. And I don't have to think about it. And there's just a few, few places to tie in what you're tying in here. I mean, you've got your solar panels in right here out to the battery right there. And if you even wanted to run some extra 12 volt loads, you could do that there, but very, very easy. So yeah, solar panels in coming through the cutoff switch into the solar panel in, PV in, and then battery, positive and negative, out to the battery. And like I've said before, don't actually need this for a system that we're gonna build here on a bare bones system. Those bus bars are just extensions of the battery terminals so we can stack up more things on there because there's just not a lot of room on these M8 terminal bolts to stack a ton of stuff up onto it. So that's all those bus bars are in that system is an extension of this. Yeah, those M8 terminal bolts have just very little threads to work with and be stacking too much up on here. So in general, you're good with, with your solar cables or your uh, battery cables from your inverter to the battery on there and anything else you can put onto the bus bars. But we are gonna build a bare bones system, but I wanted just to say for the brains, I really do like the Victron, especially for beginners, because by just going to your app and taking a peek at what is happening, it's just so, so helpful. I mean, right there, you've got your battery voltage, so you know that everything is in good shape or I'm sorry, that's the uh, current voltage coming in off the solar panels. So 73 volts. Great. Down here is your battery voltage, excuse me, 14.2, holding it in absorption for two hours. Makes it just very easy at a glance. And, and the more you start looking at this, it just all starts to make sense and you know exactly what's happening with your battery. So yeah, the brains are really, really important. I've made a lot of videos on some other charge controllers I've used. Uh, most extensively was that EP Ever, which is also a good MPPT controller. But I found it, it lagged a little behind compared to the Victrons. The Victrons just run full tilt until you reach your desired parameters. And where the EP ever, I could never quite get it to just keep opening up full board. Always wanted to kind of regulate the solar panels down before I'd got up to full absorption. And I don't have that problem here with the Victrons. So for me, the brains of the system being the most important, I like the Victrons for that reason, and I just find it extremely user-friendly. We're programming the EP Ever and a couple other controllers I've used over my you know, 30 years of living off-grid. Some of them are much more difficult to program. Uh, this is just plug and play. You know, once you get it set in your uh, settings of what you're working with, what size battery, et cetera, et cetera, then you're done. So on this cheaper one, I mean, you can do a few hundred watts of solar, no problem, it can handle that. If you are if you find you're gonna need a little bit more to keep up with your system, then you know you might wanna jump up to a little bit larger charge controller, but uh, their prices are pretty reasonable these days. And like I said, I'm not uh, so sold on any given battery. We've reviewed tons of them out here. They're all working good. Uh, same thing with inverters. There, you know, there are better inverters and there's less good inverters, but depending on what your budget is and what you decide to go with, I just recommend you get the uh, pure sine wave inverters for sure, which are pretty much uh, just what are mostly available now anyways. We used to use the old modified sine wave back in the day, but uh, if you happen to see one, stay away from it. You wanna, for our devices these days, use pure sine wave, it's just better. 
Okay, right here we've got all the components to make a bare bones system. This is going to get those devices we've been showing you up and running. Your power goes out. You're going to just have this ready to go. So we've got the heart, the battery. We've got the brains, a charge controller. We've got a couple of solar panels out there. We've got an inverter ready to go. We've got a fuse ready to go. We've got a cutoff switch for the solar panels. A little bit of 10 gauge wire. And one of these here, which I'll show you when we all tie it up together, especially these cables here, how much you're going to love this little device right here. <laughs> uh, it'll keep you from jumping when you hook it up. So there we go. We're about ready to tie up this bare bone system and it's going to have the ability to run your refrigerator, your freezer, and even an air fryer or a hot plate like we've been showing you. So that's all it is, but about 10, 10 pieces, call it a couple of solar panels uh, on top of this stuff right here, and you're gonna be up and running. So we're gonna do that on the next one. So pretty simple. Hope you guys have been uh, adding to your shopping cart, right? You're thinking about it now, because just since I talked to you last, the news on the mainland, power outages everywhere, <laughs> everything's ramping up. So this is going to buy you a little, a little time for that scenario. When the power goes down, you will be up and running. And the last thing I'll say about building your little first system of this size is that we're going to get all of those components and everything tied up for right around a thousand bucks. So not a huge amount of money to keep you up and running in any eventuality. So yeah, all of this combined for one entire system. It's gonna be right around a thousand dollars. You might be able to get in a little bit cheaper. It might cost you a few bucks more depending where you live and what you choose to get, but not a huge, huge investment to protect your investment. All right, you guys, you're almost there. You've almost got your first system up and running. We're going to show you how to quickly build one in the next one. And until then, good luck gathering your equipment. You're almost ready to go off-grid to some capacity. Aloha, you guys. Hope you're enjoying this series. I'm going to watch my step here. I'm deep in the jungle. <laughs>